Hello everyone, my name is John Kitson, I'm one of the Scrum Masters in the Gaming Tribe and I'm going to be doing my talk today on squad health checks. Um, yeah, was, uh, one of the roles of a Scrum Master is to encourage delivery teams to inspect and adapt with the aim of continuous improvement. Change is very much a constant um, in the business. Um, there's always things that can be optimised to deliver the right thing in the right way at the right time. There are numerous different approaches to discovering areas for improvement, some of which I'll talk about a little bit later in this presentation. Um, back in the first uh, iteration of our uh, tech talks back in September, I talked about uh, the Agile Maturity Model we developed. And this was a deep dive exercise intended to discover which areas require the most focus from both management and the squads themselves to ensure that we were best meeting the needs of the business. Now, Agile, as I described at the time, is a very much used and abused term these days, um, but it's also something that we pride ourselves on as a business. Um, many of the external communications used by our recruitment team focus on the term agility. We employ people based in part on their experience with Agile methods, and we even have coffee mugs branded saying, we bet you've never worked anywhere as Agile. What we didn't actually have though was a shared understanding of what that meant um, and more importantly uh, how to make sure that we could continue improving upon it in a tangible way. So we set about developing the Agile Maturity Model um, and put together four themes. These were foundations, essentially the Agile hygiene factors, how busy squad size, are your process fundamentals uh, correct, uh, if you have the right level of facilitation in your teams. Delivery performance, so this is your capability around planning and forecasting, the so value focus and your data, data, data driven decision making. Uh, and culture, so trust and respect amongst team members and between squads, um, collaboration and teamwork and transparency, those kind of things. And leadership, both from a technical and a product perspective, uh, their presence and engagement uh, within the squads, and, and their backlog and roadmap management, vision and goals. So what did we find out from this maturity model? We got a great deal of insight. Um, some squads determined that they didn't have as much insight into the future vision and goals that they wanted. Some squads felt they didn't receive enough feedback um, as to the impact of the work that they delivered. And some squads felt that they were physically too large and could benefit from being separated into smaller sub-teams. So we also learned that defining agility in and of itself is actually quite a challenging thing. Um, creating scenarios for all of these those multiple themes and the factors within them and then you kind of multiply on top of that the four maturity levels that you have to put scenarios against is even harder. So there are a hundred of these things in total. Um, so yeah, it's quite heavyweight. Uh, so as a result, scoring the squads was quite a fatiguing juicy thing. Um, as my colleague Ash will attest to, uh, this, these kind of sessions uh, don't last for and about an hour and a half sometimes. So the advantages in summary, this maturity model, it's exhaustive, it's deep dive, it's tailored to your own particular context, um, and it generated a lot of healthy discussion and debate and improvement actions that were taken forward. As I've alluded to, the big down point for it is that it was kind of too heavyweight, time consuming. And as a result, it would encourage long feedback loops so you could see whether or not the interventions you made have actually had any uh, impact. It's also arduous to maintain and not particularly visual in its uh, output, so it's not the kind of thing that you can kind of print out this big spreadsheet and put it on the wall and have it be meaningful to all your stakeholders. And there's also the built-in assumption that, given that it's a maturity model and there are four levels, that you should always try and strive to achieve the highest level in each. It's not actually possible to do that. So we needed to get the balance right. We needed something that was a bit more repeatable. So I kind of come up with this uh, spectrum of squad measurement techniques. I don't think it's in a formal thing. Um, but towards the top, we've got things uh, like Adele was talking about earlier, team temperature taking. It's unstructured, it's lightweight, it's something you can repeat very frequently. And uh, you have your sales and anchor style game that was also described by Adele. Um, and then on the other end of the scale, we've got the heavyweight maturity model. We needed something that was kind of going to in the sweet spot. So we did a bit of research and we discovered um, this squad health check which was developed, surprise surprise, by Spotify. Um, 
It's a structured assessment approach for multiple delivery teams. And you can run it with one, you can run it with many. And it's designed for teams to identify trends and areas for improvement. Uh, but it also has the benefit of being a highly visual thing, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and it allows management to see common pain points and systemic issues. And as a result of being more lightweight, it can be run more frequently during the team retro. I wonder every two weeks, but more frequently. Anyway. This is the, an example of the output uh, from one of our assessments. So you can see quite clearly, straight away, there are no reds in here. The team are pretty happy. Uh, let's mix it up and green. Um, and also no downward trend arrows. So down the left hand side we have our areas um, or perspectives, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then on the right hand side you capture the actions that you want to take. This is a level of, sorry, this is a summary of uh, multiple squads. Uh, so you can see immediately if you scan vertically down squad two, for example, don't look particularly happy with this fair amount of red there. Uh, whereas squad four, I don't know where the time. Uh, if you scan horizontally across, you can see where the maybe some of the systemic issues are. So within this company, the ease of actually releasing uh, looks to be a bit of a difficulty, and maybe a little bit around speed as well. So uh, one of the important things to do as part of this is to actually define your perspectives. Um, these are the ones we came up with, and these were our definitions of happy and sad. I'm not going to read through them all, uh, but you know, feel free to take a photograph. <laughs> um, so I'll just give you uh, an example. Pawns or players, this is uh, how much in control uh, of their own destiny to the team feel. Uh, are they able to contribute towards the, the insight and the innovation process, or are they basically told, JFDI, get on with it? I'm telling you what to do. We have a suitable process, are the processes in place for the team uh, hindering or helping. Um, we have learning. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of 10% time, hands up if you've heard of that as a thing. So that's, say, something you can stipulate as a company, I think you the Scarlet and the Vet Tribe. Every two weeks you'll have one day dedicated to just learning uh, and sharpening your skills. Um, and that's a good way of kind of baking that, that in. Um, so that's one end of the scale. Or the other is we never have time to learn anything. No such rights don't kind of meet the deadlines. And another good one is fun. Everyone likes to have fun at work and wants to dread coming in. Um, and how stimulating is the work that we're actually doing as well. So this is how you run a squad health check. As I've described, agree perspectives, agree definitions of happy and sad, run the workshops. So this is something you can do as a separate bespoke kind of session, or you can do it during your squad retrospective, it's up to you. Um, so one good technique is to have your red, amber, and green kind of signals kind of printed out as cars, and you give them to all your team members. Um, and when you're discussing each of those different perspectives, you get able to just kind of like play that hand at once, but like planning poker, if you've done that, then you are kind of agile estimation. Um, and then as you're going through, agree the trends and agree the uh, actions and areas of improvement. Uh, and then whoever's facilitated the session, create that visualization for the squad, uh, as I've demonstrated before. Get that printed out so that it's visible for everyone in the team. Um, and follow up on the actions. Uh, look at the bigger picture of the management. So if you've got multiple delivery squads, uh, get that, that aggregated view and then ask the questions about what are these systemic issues all about? How do we improve the situation? Uh, then basically agree how often you want to run these. We've agreed on quarterly for our school health check. So the next batch will start uh, next month. So a few tips. Uh, green doesn't always mean like everything's perfect. Otherwise we're going to have to do continuous improvement. We can say, yeah, go cheat that now. Uh, amber means we can live with it, but it's not ideal. And red is something that definitely is hindering the squad, something you need to be focusing on resolving. Uh, as I've described, you planning for your style kind of voting to, to avoid group thinks, uh, to avoid kind of the strongest, most vocal members of the, of the squad from uh, uh, directing the discussion. And make sure the squad discusses properly towards an agreement where there are any disagreements on the ratings. So, 
summarizing uh, the advantages of the health check are it is tailored, it is structured to your, uh, sorry, tailored to your particular business, it's a structured assessment, it's easy to facilitate, uh, it's visual, it's repeatable, uh, the workshops can be run in under an hour, and it's scalable from one to many teams. These are the disadvantages I could come up with. So one team's green might not be another team green, it could be an amber or red in another team, so you're not always comparing apples with apples. Uh, getting agreement can sometimes be difficult, use perceptive differences, and most importantly, it needs a supportive and blame free transparent culture. This isn't obviously a disadvantage of the model, uh, it's just something that you have to have in place uh, if you have people that might seek to hold others accountable for whenever there's a red showing up one of these right ratings, and that's something that needs to be worked out before we kind of uh, go ahead and run these sessions. And there's obviously the potential to, to gain the results, but again, that's probably a cultural thing. Finally, so, uh, as with all things organisational improvement, this is an approximation. It's impossible to be exact when it comes to these things um, when you measure and change. But for this to work very well, open supportive culture, again, just kind of reinforcing that point. Um, and it isn't the only way to find improvements, it's part of a portfolio of tools. Um, and there are plenty of Adele's presentation. Uh, so I hope that between myself, all of the other presentations today, that you've actually found some really good ideas to take back to your place to work, something that you can apply. Uh, and thank you very much. Does anybody have any specific questions for John? Or should we just jump straight to general?